What's going on everybody and welcome to part 8 of our self-driving scooter course. Uh, it's been about a week or so since I posted the videos and what I'm going to do in this video is just kind of catch everybody up to the changes that have been proposed and made by just kind of like other people rather than really me so I wasn't really filming when I made the changes. So uh, so yeah, so if, if for whatever reason you don't care about that, we're not actually going to be doing any coding per se, we're, I'm just going to kind of outline the, the actual changes that were made and why. Um, in theory, you could skip this video. So if you're someone who doesn't like to listen to me talk, skip the video. So um, with that, uh, the changes that were made were, well, first let's just talk real briefly about one of the suggestions that we had. And that was that um, we, could, we could gauge how much we wanted to turn and also what speed we should be going because partly what caused us to run off the road in the first place was our speed was too high for our turning rules but if we made the turning rules more um, liberal then they would in theory probably just overturn all the time so this is a really hard balance but uh, what we could have done is just calculated the slope so if the slope was um, I suppose you would say if the slope was really steep then yeah you would go straight ahead no problem and go as fast as you want but as the slope kind of turned to be more horizontal um, that's when you probably want to start slowing down so um, so that was a really great idea a lot of people proposed that one actually um, now I'm actually not going to implement it yet we might still revisit this whole concept um, down the line but like I said before kind of the main goal here was to create something that would at least be able to validate or confirm that we're on track uh, but other than that, it was never really my intention or, or expectation that we could actually have a fully usable self-driving vehicle uh, with just those rules. It just didn't seem like that was going to be the case. So what we're going to be getting into is uh, applying a neural network to the self-driving car. Now, I got a lot of comments that were like, can you just use a convolutional neural network or just can't you just use a neural network? Well, yeah, sort of. You can't just like throw neural networks at things though. So hopefully once we get through this, that'll make a little more sense to you. But that, the world is, 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 machine learning is not just, yeah, throw a neural network and that solves all the problems. It's, that's just not the case. Um, but what my plan is, is we can use a neural network. I, I expect that what, you know, with a neural network, we can probably just by going off of game frames and some training data, we can probably make a good or decent self-driving um, scooter or whatever. I'm going to upgrade the scooter. The scooter's getting too boring for me, but we'll, we'll upgrade that soon enough. Um, but what I'd like to do is, or what I know is that with a neural network, we can get a good self-driving scooter, car, whatever. Uh, but we're going to need something else to get it to the next level. And my envision for that is, first of all, you just need a lot of training data. So the more training data you have, the better it's going to be. But it's going to be very tedious for you yourself to, to build that training data. So instead, what you can do is get a good self-driving car, uh, scooter, whatever, and validate it with the lines that we've got or whatever and have it train itself over time in sort of reinforcement learning. But we're not going to be using like Q learning or anything like that. We're just going to have it reinforce uh, with training samples, basically. Kind of like what we did with the cart pole example. Anyway, that's the plan moving forward. Now let's talk about some of the changes that we've made um, up to this point. So first of all, here's the GitHub. Depending on when you're viewing this video, this, this GitHub might not actually look like this. So I'll try my best to make it somewhat make sense, <laughs> um, but probably in tutorial codes since um, this version is probably one of the last versions of the whole lane drawing thing. I'll probably throw all of these into tutorial codes. So tutorial codes I've kind of separated out. These are like the video tutorials. And then whenever we have like a main.py in this real root directory of the, uh, the GitHub project, um, that's going to be like the latest version. So uh, anyway, the, the changes that have been made here, um, probably the biggest one is the uh, grab screen, but also just note I've separated out draw lanes.py, obviously direct keys that was already pulled out, and then grab screen. So grab screen is what actually pulls in the screen. Um, draw lanes, it's what the function that draws lanes. I was really hoping somebody would take a crack at rewriting this, but um, no one has. So, <laughs> seriously, try. So anyway, um, but that's okay. That one actually works all right. And the biggest issue was our frame rate. And grab screen um, has alleviated that. So this is probably really hard to see. 
Um, but basically what it's doing is it's using PyWin32 rather than the Python imaging library. Now, if you're on um, Ubuntu or Mac, although I'm not positive how easily you can, I know you can play Grand Theft Auto on Ubuntu, but I'm not really sure how many of you are. But t something tells me if you're playing Grand Theft Auto V on Ubuntu, you're a crafty person, so you can probably figure this out on your own. But anyway, <laughs> the faster way is with PyWin32, which is specific to Windows. So anyway, uh, you can keep using Python Imaging Library if you want. Also, now that when I was recording the first seven videos, um, uh, there was an update to Grand Theft Auto and the mods. Every time that happens, you got to wait for the creator of the, uh, the trainer to update. Um, but now it is updated, and I just want to at least clue you in if you're completely unfamiliar. I'm not going to get too far in depth, but the in-game trainer is um, a thing where you can just kind of press a key and you can do all kinds of modifications to the game. There's tons of Grand Theft Auto mods out there, um, but the two that I'm using, the reason why I'm using Grand Theft Auto 5 is because of the mods. It just makes it super simple. So I'm using Alexander Blade's in-game native trainer, which is uh, what you see here. But then also I'm using the enhanced version, which gives me a few more options, looks a little better, and allows me to save certain vehicles and stuff. But the main point is you can do things like you can go into the world, you can say, hmm, um, I don't want any traffic. And now there is no traffic. There will be no cars coming and going. So if you want traffic out of the way, you can say no traffic. Now eventually we want to deal with traffic, but right now for what I'm going to do in the next few videos, um, I don't want any traffic because basically we're just going to try to train a neural network um, and no traffic will just make that simpler. We just I just want to see the most basic thing. Can at least a neural network find the lanes and, and realize, hey, I think we want to stay inside the lanes. <laughs> Can we get a neural network to do that simple task? Um, the next thing, the other thing that I like about it is, oh, in world, you can also change the weather, which I've already done. So I've frozen the weather to be just total clear skies, so it's perfect lighting. Also, I've frozen time. Um, so pause the clock. So again, sun's up and high in the sky, just for lighting purposes. Anyway, that's what I'm doing over there. Again, it's the enhanced native trainer, or enhanced trainer, I can't remember, but you can find it on GTA5mods.com. Um, but I'll let you guys figure that one out on your own because I don't really want to get too far in depth into that. And it's also just not totally necessary that you do that, but it makes it easier. Um, now, uh, so grab screen, we're doing that. It doubles the frame rate. Um, so um, I had actually done research into the, the quickest way to get a, a screenshot in Python. This is basically what you're doing. So you're taking screenshots as fast as possible. Um, and I found that PyWin32 was the fastest, but I couldn't figure out how to get it to return a nice shaped perfect colored um, image. I just, I just was just, I was like, oh, I'll try this later. And then by the time I, or, well, before I got back to trying it, uh, this guy had submitted it and uh, it worked drag and drop, no problem. So great. That's what we're going to be using for taking screenshots um, and just recording the screen in general. So that's probably the biggest change. And it's great because that's like the, that's like the first step in the long step of analysis that you're going to be doing no matter what form of analysis you're doing whether we're running a neural network or we're doing open cv you know um, algorithms so that makes a huge difference all the way down the pipeline so super useful now uh other than that um i've like i said before i've kind of separated out the files just to kind of try to keep things as organized as possible normally when i'm just programming myself i tend to throw everything in the same script but when you've got something open source like this, it's a little easier because if somebody wants to modify direct keys or they want to modify draw lanes or grab screen, it's just so much more compartmentalized so everybody else can kind of see how it's organized. So I think that was, that's, I'll probably try to keep doing that, but I'm pretty bad about doing that. So <laughs> if you have a organizational tip, feel free to make a pull request. So <laughs> anyway, um, what we're going to be doing in the next video is getting into using a neural network to attempt to learn the lanes. And again, the idea is to use the neural network to make an okay self-driving car, scooter, whatever. Um, but then we're still going to probably wind up using those lanes to verify whether or not we are in a lane. And then over time, we can use that to continue building a data set so we can have millions and millions of examples. Um, the other thing I'd like to do is somehow gather speed so how fast are we going and there's a few ways to do that um the other thing that was brought to my attention there's actually two major things um did i not save it i don't think i saved it someone made a comment 
on YouTube. I need to save it before I forget. Um, it was for a script hook in Python. Uh, where did that go? Somewhere. Hmm. I'll have to find that. Uh, but the other thing is deep, uh, deep GTA 5. So there's this other GitHub repository. It's uh, github.com ai-tor slash deep GTA V. Um, I cannot find this. Why can't I find it? I wonder, maybe it was on Twitter. Maybe I'm looking in the wrong place. Um, hmm. I don't know. I just saw it. Like, I just read it, like, <laughs> right before I started filming this, but I... Let me try script. Nope. Okay, I don't know. Anyway, um, there was also that, so we could use that to probably get more in-game data. Like, speed is one that I think isn't necessarily cheating if we use it because um, a real self-driving car would have access to, like, the ECU, so it would know how fast it was going. <laughs> so um, that might be something I'll look into. I don't think I want to get into using, like, a huge package like either of these or, or an outside library just for speed, though, but I might take a peek into it. Um, there's this AI tour, but then there's also, um, there is a Python, um, is it vpilot? Is this it? Yeah. So this, if I could bring it over, um, is AI tour vpilot. It's just a Python version of kind of communicating with their, their thing. So anyway, I might look more into that as time goes on. If you guys know of more projects and stuff that kind of connect to, Grand Theft Auto really easily or whatever, feel free to uh, keep letting me know about them because eventually they might prove to be pretty useful for just getting things more and more advanced. All right, so I think that about clears it up. Um, well, basically, to carry on to the next video, um, make sure you have direct keys, draw lanes, grab screen, and main.py. If you're watching this right when it releases, it'll, it might be just like it is right now, but chances are it'll be in tutorial codes and you'll have main and all the other stuff will be thrown into there. Um, and then now what we're going to be doing is getting into uh, a neural network application of all this stuff. So that's what you guys have to look forward to. If you're having uh, questions, comments, concerns, suggestions, whatever, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video and we'll start uh, training an AI to drive a scooter. All right. See you in the next video.